I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I think I, I usually do. Um, we're, we're talking about inclined planes. Uh, and what we're going to do is actually start with what I want you to get out of this. Oh, sorry. And, and then we'll work on why that is the way it is. So, let's say we have an inclined plane with an angle theta, and it's given right there. We have a mass here. So, <clears throat> in general, in the case of not having friction, there are two forces acting on this. There is the plane pushing it perpendicular to the plane. That's the normal force. That's the plane pushing out. And then we have gravity, and of course gravity can only always pull straight down. Uh, so we'll say and we know that the block will accelerate down the plane because that's what we see happen all the time. And the reason it does so is because the weight pulls it down. But if we look at this, uh, the weight <coughs> pulls straight down. And it's only part of weight that pulls this thing down the plane. And, and this is the part that I usually do differently, but the part of weight that pulls us down the plane is the weight mg times the sine of that angle. And then the rest of the weight pulls opposite the normal force, and that's mg cosine of theta. So if we're going to look at this mass in, in, in a way to see what's going on with it, we have the normal force this way, we have part of weight pulling it into the plane, and we have the other part of weight pulling it down the plane. So I'll just I'll draw, this, I'll draw the plane in there. And we're accelerating this way. So if we look at it, um, I know that this force and this force have to be equal because we're not accelerating in this direction. So I can say that the normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta. There are no forces in that direction. And that can change friction and, and that that's one thing to look at. And then here, because these two are equal, they cancel each other out, and I see that my net force is equal to mg times the sine of theta. So ma is equal to mg times the sine of theta. And we continue with it. We see that the acceleration down the plane without friction is just g times the sine of theta. Um, and the mass canceling out it goes so far as to say that the mass doesn't matter when we're on an inclined plane. It just all that matters to determine the acceleration is the angle. And so for the proof of this, let's look back down here at the incline. And I'm sorry these lines aren't straight. So let's say we have an angle theta here. And, and what we did was break down weight. So we know that the weight is always straight down. But what we're looking at is the part of weight that pulls me into the plane and the part of weight that pulls me down the plane. And it's important that we draw this triangle right. Okay, so we have the, oof, sorry. We have the weight that is into the plane and what is down the plane. So, if we can figure out, this makes the hypotenuse, mg is the hypotenuse, if we can figure out where the angle goes, then we're good. Now, we said this was perpendicular to the plane, and that's going to be helpful. So if this is a right triangle here, that's theta, this is 90 minus theta. If this is 90 and this is 90 minus theta, this has to be theta in order for everything to work out. This may be something that you have to work through a couple times to see it. But once you do that, that makes this side the adjacent side. So we have the hypotenuse mg times the cosine of theta. That's where we get that from. And this is the opposite side. So we're going to have mg times the sine of theta there because it's the opposite side. This is where we're getting this 
mg sine theta pulls down the plane and mg cosine theta pulls into the plane. <clears throat> I'm going to run through a complicated example and um, see if that clears. So let's say that we have this situation. We have an incline, very steep incline. Oh. Let's say it's a 30 degree angle. And on that incline we have our, our mass m. And it's connected by a pulley to a mass of 2m. And let's say we have a coefficient of friction mu that's equal to uh, 0 0.5. Okay. And so what we want to do is find the acceleration of this whole system. <clears throat> so, first thing we need to do is, is a free body diagram. I know I have um, 2mg pulling down here, and I know that I have mg sine of theta pulling this way. We've got the normal force going up. I have mg cosine of theta pulling it into the plane. 2m is bigger than m, so let's go ahead and say that we accelerate this way. If that's the case, we're also going to have friction back. So, mg sine theta down, mg cosine theta in. What we're going to do, like we did in the last unit, is straighten everything out. So I've got m, I have friction pulling back, I have mg sine theta pulling back. We're attached to 2m. And I have 2mg pulling this way. So before we can go on, we need to figure out what friction is going to be. Friction is mu times the normal force. Well, that's going to be 0.5. And in this case, let's go ahead and draw that in. i got the normal force up and mg times the cosine of theta pointing opposite that. So I know that the normal force and mg cosine theta are equal to each other, so they cancel out. But when I'm looking for friction, I'm not talking about mg, I'm talking about mg times the cosine of our angle. So that force of friction is mg times, if we take 0.5 and uh, 0.5 times cosine 30, uh, just for numbers sake we're going to have mg times .433 so that's what friction is so looking at this I've got mg times the sine of 30 so mg times 0.5 pulling back uh, mg times 0.43 pulling back. A mass of m attached to a mass of 2m that has 2mg pulling it this way. Put those two masses together, I've got 3m. 2mg pulling in this direction, and backwards I have 0.93mg pulling in this direction. So I can take and look at my net force acting on this whole system. I got 3m, and this way 2mg minus 0.93mg uh, 1.07mg pulling on this thing. So we can take all of that and put it into the sum of my forces equals mass times acceleration. So 1.07mg equals mass times acceleration the m's cross out oh sorry three mass times the acceleration. i have three masses here so those cross out and i have uh, 10.7 equals three times the acceleration and so my acceleration divide both sides by three comes out to be somewhere close to 3.4 meters per second squared um 
just an example of all the things that we can do. And again, the takeaway from this is the part pulling you down the plane, causing your acceleration, giving you a force that changes the motion of the object is mg sine of theta. The part pulling into the plane opposite the normal force is mg cosine theta.